Pulled pork is a barbecue staple, and today we're gonna figure out the best way to cook it. We have a control pork butt, and we're gonna compare it to three extremely unique methods. Dry aged, dry brined, and wet brine. And today we have our guest taste tester, Tibby. Which process will come out on top? Let's find out. So when it comes to pulled pork, there is one cut that reigns supreme, and it is this guy right here, the pork butt. And when you hear the term pork butt, I know what you're probably thinking. We're cooking the butt mm. of the pork. Turns out we're not. This here is the shoulder. This cut is also known as the Boston butt, and it's the top of the shoulder. Very different than a picnic shoulder, which is closer to the bottom of the shoulder. As you can see, this cut has tons and tons of marbling and intramuscular fat, which means it is a quite tough cut, but after cooking it low and slow, it becomes absolutely melt in your mouth tender. So you'll notice that these here are bone in pork butts and flipping them over, you can see it has that nice fat cap on top. Okay, so for the first pork butt, we're gonna try dry aging it. Possibly that's the key to the perfect pulled pork. I'm gonna leave this completely untrimmed and throw it in the dry ager. Okay, so pork butt number two, we're gonna be wet brining. So traditional brines are all liquid or wet brines in which we're turning salt into a salinated solution. Sometimes you can add other flavors, but I'm keeping this extremely simple with just salt and water. The salt in the brine is not only gonna season the meat deeply, but it also has tenderizing properties. And I use about 10 ounces of salt to one gallon of water, add in the pork butt, and we're gonna let this brine for just about 24 hours. Okay, and next up, our dry brined pork butt. Now, one of the problems with wet brining is it tends to dilute the flavor of the meat with all that extra water, and that's where dry brining comes in. And really, all we have to do is just season this pork butt with a whole bunch of salt. We get the same benefit of seasoning the meat deeply as well as tenderizing. However, in this case, we're gonna fully dry out that exterior, which typically helps us get a better crust and bark. And feel free to go heavy on a big cut like this. You can really take a bunch of salt. And we're just gonna get this on a rack and throw it in the fridge overnight to dry out. And just like that, through the power of movie magic, everything's ready to go. We have the 40 day dry aged, the 24 hour dry brined, the 24 hour liquid brined, and a regular fresh control. So the first thing we need to do is tackle this dry aged one by removing that outer pellicle. So as you can see, it's developed a tough outer layer, but it pretty much has zero smell whatsoever and still seems fresh. Okay, so like all of our dry ages, now we need to remove this outer pellicle and we're just gonna start slicing it up. Dry aging pork is a lot less common than beef. However, it works the exact same way. Over the course of several weeks, the meat tenderizes and the flavor concentrates. I also noticed that the pellicle on pork seems to be a lot less dark than with beef. Okay guys, just check out this front part here. The marbling on that almost looks like prosciutto. Prosciutto, 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 prosciutto prosciutto. But this muscle here is actually called the money muscle. It is easily the best part of a pork butt. And I mean, just check that thing out. Mm. So at this point, we've removed the entirety of the pellicle. Now I'm just going to make some slices on the fat cap. And this is just to help those seasonings penetrate. I added a thin oil binder, then seasoned with some kosher salt on all sides. No need to be shy with the seasoning. It's a really big cut. For some added color and flavor, I added a thin layer of barbecue rub as well. And next up, let's season that dry brine pork butt. As you can see, the meat is completely dry to the touch. All of that salt has worked in there and completely dissolved. However, interestingly, look at the fat. It's still quite wet, and a lot of that salt hasn't been able to penetrate. Once again, scoring the fat cap, thin oil binder, and just a barbecue rub. Due to the dry brine, it's already fully salted. And next up, we have the wet brined pork butt. It's been sitting in here for 24 hours. And as you can see, that water has sort of darkened to a more reddish tint. So the first thing I noticed about this beyond just the slight discoloration is that it's actually a lot more firm. Between that added moisture and that salt working on the meat, you can see how it's a lot less mushy. Patted it dry, then treated it the exact same way as the dry brined pork butt. Oil binder, then finished with the barbecue rub on all sides. And just like that, our four pork butts are ready to go. We have the dry aged, dry brined, wet brined, and the control. To keep things consistent for the control, I just seasoned it with salt and that barbecue rub. And let's get them on the grill. 
Got the grill up to 250F, and we're smoking over applewood, low and slow. Okay, everything is on the grill, and I gotta be honest, that is an absurd amount of pork, so of course we need a sauce. Starting with some apple cider vinegar, finely diced onions, ketchup, some molasses, brown sugar, mustard, some Worcestershire, hot sauce, liquid smoke, and barbecue rub. So whether you're making homemade sauce or just using store-bought, this is my favorite way to dance it up a little bit. The first is some fresh chili and just chop it up finely. This is gonna give it a nice kick, but let it cook down a bit to take away some of the heat. Next, and I'm sure none of you are shocked about this one, but we gotta add some crispy bacon. Bacon makes everything better in life, and that includes barbecue sauce. And just add as much as you think is right. Okay, so our sauce is just about fully reduced. Keep in mind, it'll continue to thicken as it cools. I'll give it a quick taste. It's definitely very hot. Got a little kick to it, but still nice and sweet. That is delicious. And I think at this point, our pork butts are ready to be checked on. We've reached the four hour point and just check them out. That bark is coming along really nicely. I decided to spray these down with a bit of apple cider vinegar. This is gonna prevent the bark from drying out and do your best to only spray the meat and not the fat cap. We want the fat to continue rendering and don't want it to cool down. After a few more hours of cooking, it's time to pull them off and wrap. Okay, so we're at a point now where it's time to wrap. We have good color and the temperature is just over 180, but most importantly, our fat has rendered. Notice how when I touch it, it doesn't really bounce back and I can just feel it super, super soft at this point. That's how we know it's time to wrap. Make sure to wrap them nice and tight. This is gonna keep it moist and speed up the cooking process until they're tender and get them back on the grill. This is a good opportunity to crack yourself a cold one until they're finished cooking. And just like that, our pork butts are probe tender and finished. And after a one hour rest, this is what they look like. Okay, so what I noticed is that visually, they actually all look very similar. Maybe the dry aged dry brine and wet brine have a slightly darker bark. Let's pull them. Starting with the control pork butt. Notice how that bone comes out cleanly, a sign that the pork butt is fully cooked. And I'll shut up for a second and allow you guys to just watch the most fun part of cooking pulled pork. Next up, the wet brined pork butt. So this is really interesting. Right off the bat, I can immediately tell this is just so much juicier than the fresh one. I'm not sure if it has to do with this particular pork butt or the fact that we wet brined it, but it is just like clearly way juicier. Up next, the dry brined pork butt. You can see how it has a really nice smoke ring, but once again, this one felt significantly juicier than the control pork butt and still very tender. Lastly, the dry aged pork butt. Now I was sort of expecting this one to be really dry due to the dry aging process, but I noticed that it still felt extremely juicy. This one was just falling apart and it pretty much took zero effort to pull the whole thing. And just like that, it was time to eat. Gonna go out on a limb here and say, I think we cooked enough pulled pork for dinner. This should be sufficient, but we have the dry aged, the dry brined, the wet brined, the control, and our bacon barbecue sauce because we're healthy. Starting with the control. Pretty good, I'd say that's relatively standard pulled pork. Honestly, a little dry, but not terrible. Next up, the wet brined. This one is significantly more juicy. I mean, visually I could already tell that. The flavor is also a bit better, more of a salty punch to it. And next up, the dry brine. I'd say overall the flavor of this one's a little bit better than the wet brine. Slightly less juicy, but comparable. Last up, the dry aged pulled pork. First time ever trying dry aged pulled pork. That flavor is completely unique to the rest of them. Unlike dry aged beef, which is typically more funky in flavor, this one's actually more nutty, if that makes any sense at all to people watching. In terms of texture, I'd say this one's actually the most tender, not necessarily the most juicy. However, it is juicier than the control. So I'm actually surprised to say that this one, the dry aged pulled pork is easily my favorite. However, we can't forget the tippy taste, tippy taste test. test. <laughs> Oh. 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 You didn't even give it 
chance. All right, well, unfortunately, got to take the L on this one. I'll see you next time. Thank you. I guess the verdict is he doesn't like any of them.